-hmm. is not present. That's a direct translation and it's good. <laughs> Kukosa here now has gone into miss. Yeah. Yes, it's gone into miss. Which is very Umelenga it's, shabaha umekosa. Ndiyo hivyo lakini wajua pia mm -hmm. it's synonymous mm -hmm. with to make a mistake because mm -hmm. when you miss something mm -hmm. eh Mr. Mm. Mark. Yes. Mm. Most probably it's like you it's a deliberate miss. Mm. So when you are making a deliberate miss, mm. then we do not count your presence as very important. Mm. Mm. Ah. That's a good one. Mm. Introduce us to your two associations, Buona. You're a big man. Uh, Start with the national one. Mm -hmm. The acting chair yes. of the Kenya Students with Disability Association. What's that? Actually, you just forgot um, the aspiring UN president, 2024-2025. We didn't forget. We didn't know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but now that you've told us, you can you, also tell us. You'll also tell us about it. <laughs> so start with the national one. Kenya <laughs> Student with Disability Association. Uh, now in Kenya, mm. there are very many institutions that contain students. And these very institutions contain students with disability. So then the, I represent them in a caucus that puts, that it's an umbrella for all the students with disability in various institutions in Kenya. Uh, mostly my focus in higher learning institutions mm. because those were a lot of challenges in terms of accessibility, in terms of inclusivity. Uh, arises. Mm. So Kenya Students with Disability Association is a caucus that um, umbrella all the students with disability in various institutions in Kenya, not only University of Nairobi, in JQUAT, in Kisumu National Polytechnic, mm. Mombasa Polytechnic, I mean all of them, higher learning institutions now. Mm. Yeah. Uh -huh. In uh, UON? So in UON, mm. uh, that's where I started. Mm. Of course, I was elected in 2022, 21st May, as the chair for University of Nairobi Students with Disability Association. Mm -hmm. So, as any other institution, University of Nairobi has a disability department called the Disability Inclusion Office, our liaison office. Mm. So, we decided to make the students with disability have a representation in a very structured structured and orderly manner. So with that, there was a formation of that association as well. And as of now, I'm the representative, I'm the representative as a chair. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. So there are many things, you know, obviously to have an association, that means that there are needs that either were not being met or that there's a large population of folks who need these needs Absolutely. to be met. Absolutely. Right? Yes. What's the current status um, when we talk about uh, students uh, with disability? What is the status of how these needs are being met in Kenya today? Uh, thank you. Very most important thing for a student to be particular students with disability is representation. Mm -hmm. So there was lack of representation because there was no structure in which their, the representation is being met or their, their concerns are being met. So the status quo as at now is on trial, is on, on a third class. We are moving, mm. that's what I would say, mm -hmm. because we are trying to reach the five star. We're still on third class, mm. meaning there's still a lot to be done, meaning as much as we are having a structure of representation, it's still, there are still some hiccups. There are still what, some. what would an ideal structure look like? My ideal structure will look like, will look like this. As at now, we still have what we call special schools. Yes. Meaning, mm. we are still on the integration mm. stage. We're still not at the inclusive stage. 
So inclusive stage, this is where everyone is comfortable in whatever environment, such that we do not only take our students with disability in the so-called special school. We make this other regular school to be inclusive, to be accessible. Mm -hmm. So that is what will make a structured representation look like. Now, because otherwise a school which is regular, for example, uh, let's say Nairobi Primary or let's say Nairobi High, mm -hmm. that any other student, be it a student who is using wheelchair or scratches, will comfortably be admitted and has his or her learning progress well continued mm -hmm. without hiccups. Mm -hmm. So that is what I will define as a structure where it, all institution, all public, private institutions are accessible, are inclusive, such that we do not have... How many special schools are there in Kenya? Special schools are... Uh, there are high schools, there are eight, as per the regions. Mm -hmm. Yes. Every region has one. Has one. Mm. Okay. Mm. Primary? Primary, it's a double. Some, some regions has three. Although they are coming, I, I had there's a, there's a one that is being set up in Rift Valley. I'm still not sure whether it has been set. But uh, in, <coughs> in, in, in Nyanza region alone, um no in pr no primary there's an there's an issue in primary they are much divided there's there's deaf school mm -hmm. there's blind mm -hmm. and now there's for handicapped mm -hmm. physically handicapped and there's for mentally mm -hmm. so primary there are a bit so many they are roughly 20 last time we checked around the country yes okay mm -hmm. sorry no do you have a census during the population of people with disabilities and do we know mm. the categorization and the numbers of these of these these disabilities that is now the problem city that with the structure i'm trying to form mm. one thing that has been my agenda is data mm. data for all the students with disability mm. as at now there's no accurate data the ministry of education doesn't have this data it has it, but not in a very structured form. Mm. It, it has it in, um, in, in what we call unwritten form. Unwritten form is where it is not in one document. But it exists. It exists. Let me ask, because when you talk about schools for P children in this country mm -hmm. with disabilities, mm -hmm. or the people who don't like living with disabilities, but who have disabilities, mm -hmm. Are we then saying that every child who is of school going age and who has a disability mm. is in school? The answer, I think, is no. No. Okay, now, if we don't know the numbers of young children who are of school going age mm -hmm. with disabilities who exist, mm -hmm. then it becomes very, very difficult to understand, mm. for instance, mm. what it is that even as you plan, mm. what would actually be needed. Mm what it is that would be required for children whose disability is perhaps their sight, mm. those whose disability is hearing, mm -hmm. those who have some physical disability, whatever the range of disabilities, it mm. would be difficult to plan. Now, let me ask the other question. Are we saying therefore that when you've talked to the Ministry of Education, because I'm assuming you have, yes. do they have a blueprint or a, prob uh, or a program mm -hmm. that they have in place to cater for the needs of these young children of school going age with disabilities they do have a blueprint city but i when i checked at the blueprint i had a problem with it mm. there's what we call consistency mm. consistency it brings the doctrine of being current mm. so being current means that you must be in touch with what is ongoing as at now. Yes. Their blueprint was formed way back, even before the formation of 2010 Constitution. When we were having the Disability Act being put into place, that's when the blueprint was formed. And that was in 2005. And 
meaning the people who formed the blueprint, that the people who have been the most existing, mm. and they are the people who are who, who are anticipated to implement that blueprint. So that beats the logic of concurrence and consistency with the current issues. So that blueprint lacks that that doctrine or mm. that lack that 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 notion. Mm. So that's why I I sat down as a person who has now have information. And because I'm privileged to be an institution and I'm privileged to be taking law. So then I understand the the dynamics of life. Social, political and cultural. So then I didn't want to fat ten a bull on the market day. <laughs> so I wanted to first mm. deal with the students at the higher learning institution mm. and come up with a structure yeah. that is current with the current matters. So then as we move, then I will disseminate to primary and nursery schools. Okay. Let me ask you something, perhaps, which is more pertinent. Mm -hmm. How many members do you have? Because you are a student leader. Yes. Within now, this student leadership does it only cover universities? Does it cover tertiary? High, higher learnings? Higher learnings. Yes, so that how, is tertiary. How many members do you have? As of now, the members whom have been able, with their little resources, I have are four thousand five hundred and eighty-one. Now, and are your members? All people living with disabilities, or people can actually be members without necessarily having disabilities. Uh, they, they, they are members with disabilities because that is what the representation you, has. They increased. are members. They have, so there are four thousand. Yes, in those who are registered and mm. those who the, are known, who, whom the, you have knowledge of. Who I'm, I have no, I'm no, I have knowledge of, mm. and um, remember, I'm also proposing a bill in parliament. Mm and to the departmental committee that deals with disability issues mm. to allow me mm. to come up with more accurate data with good resources because it requires me to move across the country mm. and McHugh have been operating on a zero budget mm. mm. while well, moving from Kisi to Kana, Kajiado, Siaya and whatever places. Mm. So then the budget, uh, the, the proposal I'm proposing to the parliament contain that request. That now they mandate my association to be updating the nation with accurate data, which more look like a consensus, such that when there is a bottom up economy that seeks to support, mm. then it's supported from point of knowledge. Mm and a point of information. You, you know, I'm a little, con I'm a bit conflicted here. I'll tell you why I'm conflicted. Mm -hmm. Because let me say to the Ministry of Education, mm -hmm. given the role of the Ministry of Education mm -hmm. and what it's supposed to do, given, le I'm talking about the Ministry of Education, then I'm talking about Kenya Bureau of Statistics. Mm -hmm. We have institutions in this country whose job mm -hmm. is precisely what you're suggesting. Yes, yes sir. That's what they are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. And when you are looking for numbers, mm. Kenya Bureau of Statistics ought to be able to give you these numbers. Mm. So city. they have the numbers, don't they? Um, I do tend to say, but uh, see, issues with inclusive or inclusion are more technical. These are it, this is the issue. Matters mm. to do with disability is a matter that people tend to take with a sheer and seriousness. She and care, <laughs> she and responsibility. Mm. And so I didn't want to bother many people. Mm. I wanted to take this mandate because I belong to that club. I belong to that society. I know what it feels. Note that we've not tried to lie us with those institutions you're mentioning. We've tried to lie us, but now it is taking more time overdue. And we, I do say, when we delay things that should be done in a very faster way, mm. and I know I'm capable, 
then I will not bother look for institutions which will still require a lot of uh, bureaucracies mm. unnecessarily. What exactly are we talking about that we need? Because this is it. Mm. We're not talking about some grey maybe policy. No. Mm. We're talking about actual things that are needed mm. to be put in. Whether we're talking about institutions mm. then that then become uh, compliant. Mm whether we're talking about needs in school, mm. whether we're talking about Braille, mm. whether we're talking about hearing aids, whether we're talking about ramps in buildings, mm. whether we're talking about universities that have then become compliant mm. around the country. What are we talking about? And have we gotten to the place whereby institutions are becoming more aware of the need mm. to be compliant mm. for people with disability? One, there's an issue with awareness. Mm. Some institutions are not well informed, as we may presume, mm. on matters inclusion. And for your information, uh, there are very few institutions who have what we call disability liaison office. What does that mean? Disability liaison office, this is an office that caters for any matter that requires disability attention, that, that is of disability. Now, for example, in the University of Nairobi, mm. any issue that arises that is of disability and requires a special attention as far as disability is concerned, there's an office set called Disability Liaison Office. And it's a requirement that each and, each, each and every institution, learning institution, should have it. Because this is a direct office mm. that links, that, 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 that is a connection between students or staff with disability with administration. Okay. Let me talk about funding which you mentioned. Eh? Mm. We've had students...